That extended break. We're back. Sorry about that. We, we tend to do that. Liquid, liquefy. Liquidate. Oh, I still forgot to get a drink of water after all that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Chelsea. So, we're on the new portion of the night where we invite again Jazz getting up to this podcast. Ashley, we're going to get her in the group. Can't have one without the other. Well, you can, but it's not as good. They make the stories, we tell the stories, or their stories. Um, and again, we are everywhere you can find podcasts, uh, Spreaker, Spotify, iTunes, everywhere. We're downloaded in 43 countries, and quite often we are on Feedspot.com's top 10 Canadian best paranormal podcasts. So that's our... Thank you. Thank you. I haven't checked this week. I was out of town. I just got back at 1 o'clock this afternoon. I was gone for four days. Usually I check every now and then. So, Speaking of out of town, we were in Fargo. There's a place called Heritage Village, which is really cool. I don't know why Winnipeg doesn't do it. I know we have Lower Fort Gary. Uh, Calgary has a Heritage Village, which is super cool. We really need like something like that. Oh, make a wish. Anyway, uh, I'm very superstitious. Uh, so, in, and, and I like shiny things and lose concentration. But um, the Heritage Village was amazing. And apparently, of course, like with everything, one of the houses is very haunted there, and it's called the Houston House. And uh, I guess the gentleman died in the house because when you read the plaque, he was caught in a snowstorm. He got really, really sick, but he lived for another three months. So I guess he did find his way home from the snowstorm. But uh, I guess he died in the house because they said he died three months later. Um, it's called the Houston House, and it's at the Heritage Village. So uh, again, if you're ever down in Fargo, it's not just for shopping. Like, don't, don't invest in the American economy all the time. Um, I mean, you can if you want. If I still like the person who can't get a dance with some of the birds. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of stuff. But in any event, I, I yeah. go on too much. But uh, let's do the second part of the show. Show? Uh, second part of the evening. Uh, where we would love to have people come down and tell their story. So we have Chelsea who's kindly uh, keeping track of who would want to come down and speak with us. Do we have a name, Chelsea? Oh, Gary. 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 I remember Gary. He was here last month. Round of applause. Well, he was telling he was telling me some in internet intermission last month. He was telling me some good stories. Him and his friends. So definitely. All right, Gary, I'm going to pass you my mic because we don't have a stand this week, all right? So, if I come up here? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like do a dance, too, if you want. Yes, keep the mic. Okay, uh, my name's Gary. Hi, Gary. Good evening, everyone. I've been always interested in the paranormal. Uh, I was uh, also on uh, Black Belt in Judo, and I was a head coach for uh, at the international, I guess, uh, Legion camp. I mean, has anybody been on the border of North Dakota and Manitoba? Yeah. yeah. Seen all the beautiful flowers? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I, used, I went there for 30 years as a head coach for the Legion Athletic Camp. In uh, 1994, I guess all the coaches, uh, basketball, volleyball, judo, equestrian, we get together at nighttime after the kids are asleep, have a fire, you know, have a few drinks. Well, on this uh, Thursday evening, one of my coaches was from Peru, and he was a shaman. And uh, if you know about shamans, they can speak to spirits, good and bad. So we're having a, there's probably 40 coaches around the fire. It was a great fire. And then uh, Silvio, the shaman, says, everybody join hands. So we're all joining hands in the circle, and then I, I could feel energy coming through my arms, through my chest, through my other arm, 
And so I asked the person on this side, do you feel energy coming through? Yes. Person on this side? Yes. And I thought, something is going to happen. Silvio says there's a spirit coming over the, one of the cabins to our fire. So uh, I just thought, something's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. Then one of the toughest guys in the circle stands up and breaks the energy. Silvio, who is over 300 pounds, 6'3", he went flying out of his chair. I went to him and he was just shaking and he's the shaman. And he said the spirit is angry because the circle got broken. Right? So that scares them. So this is a two-part story. So Saturday I'm driving home. I, I get caught for speeding by the RCMP. Oops. So I'm always looking at the tickets. See, can I get into this ticket? You know, please give me an explanation. Well, I look, oh, spelled my last name wrong. So I go to uh, court, 373 Broadway, two weeks later, standing in line, waiting to see a judge. And uh, then I see a biker friend, and he says, uh, oh, I saw that. He says, uh, I, I won my case. I said, good for you. Hopefully I'll win too. So I get in front of a female judge, and I said, I'm pleading guilty with an explanation. And she says, uh, what's your explanation? I said, the RCB officer spelled my last name wrong. Okay, remember this was August 9th, the ticket, 1994, okay? So I pass my ticket to the female judge. She looks at her computer. There's something wrong here. Your ticket is not appearing to vote on the computer. She goes back to the hard copy from the officer, and she just says to me, uh, you're under your ticket. And I said, well, that's great, but why am I out of my ticket? She said that the officer wrote down that he stopped you August 9th, 1921. <laughs> 1921. When I came to the judge, it was 1994 on my ticket. It changed to 1921. Then I told my uh, sister, I said, something weird's happening here. I said, and my mom, I should have said, my mom had died a year before. And I said, when was mom born? And she says, 1921. <laughs> So I think it was my mom's spirit coming over the fire. That's that's my explanation, because how could my ticket change? Yeah. Very cool, Gary. Thank you so much for sharing. That was awesome. Um, yeah, I'll do one of my stories. So um, some of you are aware, some of you who haven't been around these or to any of our investigations, don't know, but I started out with Winnipeg Paranormal Group as a client. So the house that I was living in for about four and a half, five years was really, really active. Um, it started out with my young son. He was maybe two and a half, three years old at that point. Um, we moved from an apartment and we had kept um, his room very dark for sleeping. Like we put a blanket up over the wall so it was nice and dark. Didn't have any lights. And it started with him asking us for a night light. And, you know, being a mom, and, you know, we're now in a house that doesn't have no, no blanket. It's not super dark in the room, it's just blinds. So we like, well, why, why, buddy? Why do you need a night light? He looked at me and it was almost like, well, how do you not know this, Mom? Like, the dark man comes out of my closet. It's like, oh, that's, uh, yeah, we'll get you night light. <laughs> but it actually progressed from there. So um, we experienced things like footsteps. You know, we had our living room set up in the basement. Um, and we could, it would sound like a dance party on the floor above us. Um, we had my son's toys that would turn on even though we had taken batteries out of them. So they'd all of a sudden start playing music and you're like, 
I took the battery set it up today. That should not be on. Um, we even got to the point where um, we found a handprint on the wall in our kitchen. So our son had gone to sleep. We went downstairs to you know enjoy our evening, watch some TV, and when we came up to go to bed, there was this bright red handprint on our kitchen wall. And it was larger than my son's hand, but smaller than mine. So like, we never were able to explain that. Um, I had somebody sit down on the bed beside me, and they were heavy enough that I actually rolled to the middle of my bed, and there was no one there. I think that's what probably freaked me out the most, is just feeling that, like, you know, actually feeling that there's somebody in my bed with me and I can't see them. Yeah. That was just, yeah. And on the topic of shadow men, other than the dark man, we had a lot of shadow man sightings in our house. So we had a very long hallway that went from basically the heat pump. I know. And to make it worse, it was like green checkered. Oh, it was really weird. Oh, yeah. Like it, we had lots of people who came through there, including the paranormal group, who told us that they felt it was more of a portal than <laughs> just a haunting. That's a bad sign. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we would regularly see a shadow man dart into my son's room. Um, so we had no issues believing him when he said that the dark man came out of his closet. Because was it wearing a hat? No, no okay, hat. Not this one. Okay. Yes. Uh, that house that we had lived in was built in the 1960s. Yeah. If, if I can interject for yeah. one second. <clears throat> so, what me and Sharon have done in the past, and we haven't done it lately, like it's very, very time consuming. When, when people give us an address of a very, very old house, we've been able to actually match up and do the house history as to who's died in the house and the sightings that people have or the things that they've experienced. Like it's, it's so, empowering and say like, oh my god we found our ghost or a name of the person that's haunting the house we've done that but again it's a very long and tedious artist artist journey to try and do a house history on a really really old house but we've done it i did start doing it for ashley i'm not finished because it was a dead end but the one interesting thing on this house that she was renting <laughs> a creepy thing what you're kind of dead end. Dead end, but I'm dead, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but it's because, so she said it was built in the 60s. So the thing was, that strip of land that that house and a bunch of other houses were built on was almost like, it was like a pasture. It was almost like farmland in the middle of the city. But the school that was there when she lived there and is still there to this day, it predates the property, you know what I'm saying? So I almost feel like there must have been some kind of accident just based on everything that we've always experienced and, and read and researched and everything. There must have been something connected with the school because... You want me to go? Yeah. So when the team came to my house and actually investigated, uh, my partner Kelly was there and it was really late at night. She's better at telling the story because it's her story. Yeah. Um, it was really late at night. They'd done the investigation. Equipment was starting to die. They, you know, were getting ready to call it quits. And all of a sudden, they were in. Well, they were in my bedroom. And one of the investigators she was with started hyperventilating. Uh, another one like. <gasps> Oh my god, you know? Um, and so she's asking, what, what, what? And the one investigator who was hanging by bench wedding said, something touched me. Like, something touched my hand. And you guys have to remember this, this gentleman who was an investigator with us, he's like six, three, six, four. Like, he's a big guy. You know, they like to be a big guy and be like, oh, I'm not scared of anything. And here he is, hyperventilating because something touched him. Um, and we're not we're not mocking that fact. No, no, but like, that that's just but you wouldn't expect it. No. Um, and the other investigator said that they had felt something as well. So Kelly looked up and she saw she said she saw this like cloud on my ceiling. 
Um, when we had turned off the furnace before we left, we turned off the Wi-Fi, windows were closed, like there's no reason to have a cloud in your house. No. Um, so she started snapping pictures with her phone. And what she found was that on one of the pictures, you could actually see the outline of a little girl standing on my bed. One of the other investigators that had been there had said, you know, I didn't want to bias anybody. I didn't want to tell anybody this. He's like, but I have a friend who lived in this house before Ashley, before me, and he used to see a little girl in the house. And I feel, I mean, it might be a stretch, who knows, what if one of these children from the school back in the day like just wandered over into this farm house yard with implements and out sheds and all this sh shit and like i mean anything's possible i mean it, you know like just because there was just nothing on this land for like 40 years like there weren't these houses nothing it was just attached to one property deed title for one farmhouse at the opposite end so i i feel like something nefarious happened with little kids wanting you know little kids are adventurous like shit happens it's sad but you know i, I don't know i don't know but just so far what i found and, and i am going to pursue this more when i have time because i don't have a lot of time sometimes like i mean it's very consuming we did one history search it took me i swear to god eight hours it, just to show like it does take a lot of time to be able to go through records and everything what you can find on the internet um but i will see if i can still find something cool. but yeah it's just crazy yeah. anyway sorry no okay. FYI, i i don't live in that house anymore we were renting and uh, we ended up buying a house and moving out after about four and a half, five years of living there. We didn't leave right away after we had the investigation either, so we made our peace with whatever was there. And you left it behind? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. So if we can, who's the next person would like to come up? George. George! George! George. Don't be scared of the microphone. I'll try not to be nervous. I'll try not to be nervous. Excellent. Um, okay, so I used to live in Elmwood. I'm, I'm a secular spiritist, by the way. So I study... Uh, I'm a secular spiritist. So I study um, basically um, texts that have been kind of scientifically... Uh, collected um, from through mediums um, of spirits writing through mediums using automatic writing. Um, so there was a person back in the 1800s who, who uh, collected a whole bunch of these things from like thousands of spirits um, and uh, collected them into these books. So this is what I said. Um, so this is where I got a lot of knowledge from. Um, but, so I lived in Elmwood and my partner lived with me and this was in an old family home um, so it had to be where my father grew up um, and we were living there and uh, one night it was kind of a, you know there's kind of a threshold in between sleep and wakefulness where your spirit is more awake more uh, perceptive and so once when I was in that state, there was, um, I looked to the bedroom door and there was a shadow person standing there. He was, he was pretty tall. I could tell that he was male, male just by intuition. Um, and he seemed to be very upset. And, um, and so I looked over at him and I said, what do you, what do you want? Right? kind of confrontational, maybe not the best idea, but this was before I knew better. Um, so after that, I kind of felt a rush, and I was forced into full wakefulness. And then uh, my partner woke up, she was right beside me, and um, she's like, did you see something? And I'm like, yeah, what did you see? And she said, she saw a shadow person standing in the door, and then she saw it fly right over us. Um, so that was weird. <laughs> and then, um, so uh, later in that house, there was also another instance where um, I 
had, um, I was coming home. Usually I don't feel things when I'm fully awake, but this time I felt the spirit go around me, kind of rush, rush around me, and I could tell it was uh, not nice, and it was, um, it was, it was focused on me, and then it flew, it flew into the lock of the outside door, and then when I walked up to the lock and tried to open it, my key snapped, right? It felt like it was made of, you know that powder candy that they make stuff out of? Mm -hmm. So it felt like powder candy, it's like it just broke, it just broke in my hand. And then so I couldn't get in, right? Because the, the, the part of the key was stuck in the lock. So we couldn't get in. Um, so yeah. Um, and um, later on, we moved out of that house. There was some other stuff there that the faucet would go on sometimes. And um, I, yeah, I didn't really think too much of it, but uh, it was something that uh, it was something that was just happening, I guess. But uh, there was there was a spirit that I was seeing. How long did your family own the house, if you don't mind me asking? Um, well, if my dad grew up there, it would have been over 50 years, I think. Yeah? yeah. But I mean, uh, yeah, the house that we're living in now, it's in Wolseley. Okay. It's 1910. Wow. So the basement there reminded me, like the basement of the, yeah, yeah. the museum just reminded me of my basement at home. So I'm, right. okay. I didn't feel uncomfortable at all. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and I have spirits there too. Um, so, as far as shadow spirits, um, they used to. Um, I, I would, I would, I would enter that half awake state um, sometimes, and I would see these shadow spirits standing over me while I'm in bed. Right over. Um, they didn't. They weren't doing a paralysis thing or anything like that. But they were standing over me and doing something to my chakras, right? Okay. Um, so they were there doing something to me, and I didn't like it, right? right? So what I did was I covered up. I covered the chakras that they were that they were like it was my belly. So I, I put one hand on my heart and one on my belly, and then and then they would get frustrated. Um, which was fine with me, and then usually I'd wake up. Once I had a whole bunch of them around me, and they were kind of, they were kind of, one of them was kind of teaching the other ones. Oh. Which was really weird. That is weird. Um, Interdimensional beings, do you think? Um, well, I can say what they might be from the spiritist point of view. Right. Um, but, um, so, so, what we're, what we're taught in spiritism is that um, the reason why these spirits look like shadows is because, because they're impure. So the more involved their spirits get, the more they lose this darkness and they start to radiate light. Um, so if you've, ever seen, if you've ever seen a good spirit, usually they radiate light instead of darkness. Um, and this is due to their, their, their level of purity, their level of evolution, sort of thing. Um, and um, so it's like the darkness, I know it's scary, but um, it's, it, it's like that for a reason, and not all, I, from what you're saying, mm -hmm. we can see that not all of them are malicious. Right. Mm -hmm. right? Um, so, I sometimes communicate through intuitive uh, communication with spirits as well. So once I had a, a spirit telling me that I should, that the, the spirit that we saw first in, on Elmwood in our family hall was my grandfather, and he was upset. It, it makes sense, right? Because if, if you die, you're lost in the spirit world for a while. Mm -hmm. You come home expecting to find your wife in the bedroom. Right. Instead, he finds us there. Um, and so he's probably confused and, and upset that, uh, that we're in his home and, uh, and his wife is not there and stuff like that. Uh, so 
So um, I, I was asked to call him and speak with him. Um, so I did that uh, just to talk with him about, about kind of like passing over and um, it's confusing and they don't know what they're supposed to be doing. And um, this is what spiritualism teaches is that they, they kind of get stuck because they're focused on the material world, on material things. And, um, and uh, so this causes them, because what, what the spirits focus on, that's the only thing they can perceive. So they can't perceive all the good spirits that are trying to help them because they're not. So I kind of did my best to to uh, explain um, the situation and why it was only harming why it was only harming itself to be bothering us and um, and um, like why he should be moving it's it's kind of a process that spiritists do with spirits in order to help them move on um, so I did this uh, with my grandfather, um, just intuitively, and and after that we didn't see any see anything. Oh, that's good. That's great. That's all. Yeah, no, no point to you because I as well. So. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. Uh, there is a spirit in, in our home now. Oh, is called, it? They, I asked them their name. And they said oh. So you can check out my house if you want. I, I would love to check your house out for sure. Yeah. I'll be in contact. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you so much, George. Perfect. Our okay. next one? Owen. 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 Our next king is our Michael. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Put the mask on. I was thinking about it. My dad was like, keep the mask off, please. So I put it on. So I'm going to have it because I got a really bad um, Michael Myers mask here. Very niche thing to have. And it's hot. Yeah, my whole family are the crazy. It's disgusting. Let's just talk about ghosts. <laughs> Bring on the ghosts. Yes. Well, I have kind of two different. Well, it's like multiple stories with two different experiences. One was recently with uh, Ashton Kelly at an investigation that. Well, they play in the group. Yes. They just have a the pillows. They, they do. Out. They do. I actually booked that because of. Um, like the. the spirits with spirits? Yeah, the spirits with spirits. Spirits with spirits. That's how you guys are going. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I thought I'd share something that's um, related to tonight's topic, which is like the Shadow Man. And. Uh, Start this. Things kind of started when I met my girlfriend because she's like into like paranormal stuff, and I never was really into that kind of stuff. It's all her fault. It's yeah, no, actually, it's it actually my fault because uh, she had a Ouija board, and I don't know if you guys know what Ouija boards. Oh, yeah, that means. Yeah, I was a uh, young, dumb teenager, and I thought it'd be fun to you know, fool around with this thing. You know, I was in the closet. Well, oh, I'm talking to people. Oh, yeah. Well, I think I'm gonna go over them. Just going around. I also didn't know about this. Yeah, yeah. She just started out like during the investigation because I was like, tell a story. I was like, oh, you know, you guys, well, crazy stuff happened in that next part. I get to. And uh, I did stuff with this Ouija board in our room, and then the board ended up molding in our closet. And so I like threw it out and like it's molded. And she's like, you know, if that's not the proper way to dispose of a Ouija board. I'm like, who gives a shit? You know? like, so <laughs> shit. Anyway, who cares? And then weird stuff started happening. And lots of like lots of weird stuff. I'm just gonna talk about Shadow Man and stuff to kind of stay on tonight's topic. So the, the first sighting of this being was uh, she'd gone into her bathroom, it's connected to like her bedroom in the hallway, and she like walked in there and I was, you know, working. I don't know why, it's just like, oh, she's gone, she left the room, okay. The board's just thrown in there. And I see this, this like, shadow, or call it as a shadow, go from one corner of the room, and slowly, it was like really slow, it wasn't like fast, like I, I literally saw it like move from one corner, and go like into the bathroom, right? And I was thinking, 
that's pretty weird, right? Like, that's like right now. <laughs> so I'm like, let's just be rational. I'm like, let's be rational. I go to the window, I'm like, okay, let's try and make the shadow. So I'm going, okay, let's not doing it. Okay, let's not, I'm out on the roof now, trying to like, okay, how do we, <laughs> how do we make the shadow? Nothing. I'm like, I tell her this, you know, after she comes out, like, hey, like, something weird happened. Like, a shadow, like, moved into the bathroom. She's like, you're, why are you making stuff up? I gotta make stuff up a lot, too, which is why. I generally don't tell stories because I just like make up so much stuff that she's like, it's so hard, you know, it's so hard for her to take me seriously. And I was like, no, like this was like really weird. And um, this leads into another experience. Like that experience, I don't think about it too often. Like it's very, very strange. But again, I think we all experience strange things a lot. That's like. Yeah. Be rational. Yeah, there's no such, no such thing as coincidences. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, yeah, apparently that's, that's what happens. But the second experience with the shadow man was like the one that I think about a lot. And I was lying in bed, well, as you do when you're sleeping right now, it's standing it's like, <laughs> generally. And uh, I felt like something was watching me. And this wasn't like, you know, we talk about, um, oh, what's the, like, the, Oh, sleep, sleep process. You know? It wasn't something like that. You know, I've never had an experience like that. It was like I felt something watching. So like I woke up, and I saw like a man sitting on my girlfriend's dresser in her room, like just staring at me. And I'm like, that's really weird. You know, like I, I was, I was so scared. Like, I went to, I went to grab my phone, right? But I was literally shaking. I was shaking so hard that my girlfriend woke up. She's like, what are you keep doing? I'm like, I couldn't even speak. I was like. Put the light out, there's nothing there. She's like, what the hell are you doing? Like, no, go to bed, it's three in the morning. You know, I'm like, there was a guy. And again, she's like, why are you, why do you make stuff up all the time? You never gonna break up with me, you're gonna make yourself up all the time. Don't put your clothes away, you know, no, we're doing it. Anyway, but yeah, those are my stories about this shadow thing. There's lots of weird stuff in the room. And so I thought I'd warm you guys up, you guys seem warmed up now. Yeah, yeah. I do, yeah. I get carried away talking, so let's, let's okay. keep going. Yeah, 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 we know how to do it now. Okay, let's get into like, what I really want to share. That was the shadow note stuff, which is like weird, but maybe could be explained. Maybe I'm just like totally insane, you know? Whatever. So, uh,. Paranormal group. What if I make paranormal group? That's your name, right? Essentially. So, what if I make paranormal? What if I make paranormal? Okay, I want to get this right because I want you guys to check them out if you haven't seen them. Um, because it's really cool stuff that Ashley and um, Kelly do. So I booked in this um, July 4th. It was last Thursday, correct? Friday. Friday. Last Friday. Okay. Totally boring in here. The heat's getting to me now. I shouldn't have worn the bike wires. <laughs> anyway, so we got split up into groups. We started off in the basement of the St. James Historical Museum. Correct. And it's like this. Um, what was that building? It was. Uh, uh, it's an administration building. An, an old administration building. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We started off in the basement, you know. And Kelly was saying we like to start off here, you know, because like it's really creepy, and we generally get lots of. They're on our type of vibes. And so we're looking through all the different gear and you know, it's, this was a really cool experience, like even if nothing happened, which stuff happens, so keep listening. I'm not just like you know, get to the end it's like literally nothing happened. Okay, sorry. So I'm looking at all the gear. There's like the EMF readers and there's different heat sensors and heat guns and all this stuff. And we're trying to get used to it. You know, again, I wanna do this like open minded not trying to like crap on anything because you know I, I think it's really interesting right i've grown seeing the shadow man and okay let's get to the bottom of this and uh i was getting all these readings on this one corner this one corner and i was like okay like i was even talking to kelly what, what would make this thing go off by accident and she was saying well you know i don't know what but, like it's it's going off and I'm like okay well i'm gonna like, go here and do some readings whatever so I determined this is the area, and then uh, Carly showed me this like pendulum, pendulum, yes, and I've never used this again, and it's like basically, I imagine like a neck, long necklace with a big, oh yes, those are it, yeah, that's the stuff, I'm not touching one of them, okay, so I, I took this like, my girlfriend had tried doing it, because essentially, you can use this to talk to spirits. So you start with yes or no questions, and it's yes, maybe it'll swing one way, no, it'll swing the other. That's the gist of it. And there were some kids there, and they were saying, oh, I'm talking to people, their things are going like this, you know, woo, woo. I was thinking, oh, OK, 
Okay, I don't know if that's really working, but I'll try this. So I take it and again, I'm holding it. Just start with this, with my hand under it, and I'm saying, you know, yes or no, okay, am I a man? And it, it moves. Like it, it, it moves. I'm not moving it. I'm thinking, because, you know, again, my girlfriend's there. Helen, why are you messing with me? This isn't funny. Why are you doing this? Okay, I'll switch to the other hand. Ask the same question. You know, am I, am I a man? Yes, okay. Uh, am I a female? And I just get out of it. And it does like a little, like, again, yeah, like I'm not touching this thing, which is like, again, yeah. even my heart's kind of kind of like talking about it. Like, this is really weird stuff, guys. So I go through a bunch of different questions. And uh, there's, a, there's some kids, again, they're with their pendulums and they're saying, oh, we're talking to prisoners and blah, blah, blah. And so I ask, you, oh, are you a prisoner? And it says, no. And again, I'm not moving this thing, at, like at all. And the strange thing is not that, you know, I'm not moving it, it's that when the question is done, it just dead stops, it just drops. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you'd think you're, you know, you're swinging something and it slowly comes. Like, this is like, it slowly then stops, like completely dead, like a pin that went through me. My girlfriend is there, hopefully she can back me up. Can you back me up? Yes, again. Yeah, yes, okay, we got a yes here, folks. Not making this up. So anyway, I ask a few questions, and we get to, this person's not a prisoner, they works there, okay? And then for my last question, I just, because I'm kind of cheeky, I asked if I was wasting the spirit's time, and it said yes. <laughs> and that was very nice and honest. I said, you know what? Fair enough. So we go on to the next building. So that's the administration building, and again, we're feeling a little weird. This is weird. I've never used this. It's moving. But we're trying to be rational, you know? Like, maybe it was just the wind in a basement with the windows that are closed. You know? Maybe we're both just hallucinating. Anyway, so we're in the, not the brown house, correct? That's where Ashley was. So she can vouch on this next part here. This is all very true. True stuff. So she's explaining again all the different tools that are in this building. And out of the corner of my eye, I see like a flashing. And we'll get back to that later. It's not really important right now. But I just like want to put that seed in your mind. I saw a little flashing. And I was like, well, that's whatever. I'm trying to pay attention. So the device I used in this building was not a pendulum. It was, what, what is it? What is it? Sensory aggravation glasses. Sensory aggravation glasses. And essentially, it's like overstimulate you. So the glasses are flashing red lights, like trying to give me like uh, a seizure, essentially. We're trying to get, <laughs> create a seizure, essentially. And I put in some earbuds. It has static, you know, the stimulate. And then my favorite, there's some Tic Tacs just on the table here. And I'm asking, what are those for? Are those right She's like, actually, yeah, they are. So I take basically the whole bottle, you know, because I need to really get the experience of the whole simulation. And when I first put it on, I didn't know what to expect, right? Like, I don't know what any of this is supposed to do. Just with the pendulum, I didn't know what it's supposed to do. But right away, I'm feeling uneasy. And I'm starting to hear things. Like, and it, but it was so hyper realistic that I took everything off. I'm like, are you talking to me? She said, no, like, no one's talking to you. It's like, please put the stuff back on. <laughs> please, let's get up. Okay, okay. So put the stuff back on. I'm really trying to just let everything go, you know, just focus on the flashing lights, the sounds, and I'm just supposed to tell Ashley anything that I'm experiencing, hearing, feeling. And we're there for quite a while, you know, and again, so there's things happening, maybe I'm hearing things, I'm saying, okay, I'm hearing a crack, I'm hearing some moans or something, you know, but it could be like, this, you know, oh, I'm hearing sirens, oh, well, because there's a fire truck here in 10 seconds, you know. But then I, I feel something. I feel something on my hand. I, it's like I, I visibly out of the corner of my eye saw my hand like pulse. And I was like, okay, I feel something on my hand. Right? I don't know what that means. And then I felt something scratch my neck. Okay, it's kind of like things that, you know, like right now my, my brow is itchy, you know. What the hell does that mean? Is our ghost, you know? So, again, some more time passes. I take it off. I'm like, I don't know if anything happened. Kylie's looking at Ashley. Ashley's looking at Kylie. I'm like, okay, guys, so what's going on here? And Ashley's like, you want to tell? You want to tell? And Kylie basically told me that Ashley asked the spirit to 
to try out. Okay? But, but nothing had happened. So they said, okay, uh, could you touch Colin's neck? And then as soon as she said that, something touched my hand. Something touched my neck. And that's basically a go. That's pretty <laughs> fucking weird, right? Like, uh, after that, like, it took me a moment to be like, okay, we got the pendulum. That was weird. We got something touched in my hand and my neck right after we said that. And then, um, we're talking about this, again, this light thing. And she, they're kind of talking about it. It's basically these big strong lights. And you have, to, yeah, you have to, like, step on them yeah. to make these lights activate. And I was saying, you know, I don't want to say this earlier, because I didn't know what it did, but those lights went up. And they're like, really? I'm like, yeah. Like, and shit, you know, I was like, they were going off during the thing. I, like, I just thought that's what they did. So, like, I was talking to Kylie, and there's apparently lots of, like, child spirits in that house. And she thinks, like, maybe as a child, because generally children really like me, because I'm just a big old goof, I guess. And yeah, we think maybe it was a child that interacted with me, and perhaps they were right there in the room when she was explaining everything. So yeah, that was that was pretty crazy. That was yeah yeah. And then let to close it all off. We got the pendulum, right? We got something literally touching me. Ask someone else, because I guess I don't know if this pendulum stuff. Again, we're trying to be skeptical, you know. I wrote over and over and over. I asked this person, hey, like, I saw you with this pendulum. Like, was it working for you? She said, yeah, yeah. Like, I was talking to someone. I said, oh, was it a prisoner? Because again, I'm hearing these kids talking to a prisoner. She said, no, it was the warden. I said, really? She said, yeah, I was talking to the warden. So, and it was so weird because she said, well, why not ask Well, can I talk to someone and ask if they worked there? And it said, yes. So it was like, again, it's so weird when we have like two people confirming each other's stories. Okay about the same person and um, everyone. Uh, shout out to the group for uh, putting that on. Definitely check them out. Uh, or don't, if you don't want to be touched by ghosts. <laughs> I don't know, but it was, that was my experience. Thank you for my, awesome. my rambling. Thank you, Colin. That was amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Andrea, come on up. You're our next um, contestant. Uh, Andrea. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We can okay. dance, dance. Yeah. Yeah. You guys don't mind if we stay a little bit longer, but we have a couple of extra. It's all good. Open mic people. <laughs> Hi, Andrea. Welcome up. <laughs> well, um, very many years ago, I lived in a home that there was an awful lot of activity in, and we'd have guests over that things would happen in front of like 10 people. So I had a great interest in it, and I used to work in a salon. And uh, we, you know, it was a small salon, so everybody would talk, and I would tell a story, and then all of a sudden, we were in an older neighborhood of uh, Elmwood and East Kildonan, so there's like big old houses around and stuff. So often clients would start talking about stories also. So a friend of mine, her and I decided we were going to write a book on ghost stories and try to find factual stuff about it before we would do the story. So anyways, we uh, ended up, uh, we did quite a few. Her husband though was from Yugoslavia and lived in an area that was, uh, had a lot of witches and gypsies. So he was very not happy with us writing this book. So whenever we would go and we would do uh, an interview with people, we would find out what they had to say about their place, and then we would spend months trying to research it, and if we found any factual stuff, then it would be part of our stories. So, but as we interviewed them, we'd always have, uh, uh, it was like a police tape, and we would use one tape that we would record them with, and then when we'd go home, so that we could remember how to decipher things. So. Anyways, uh, we had, you know, we had lots of clients and there were lots of amazing stories, which I do have to say. Mm -hmm. There was, so we were about seven stories in and um, I had one client that they had, it was, uh, it's like a mansion and it's uh, in the Fraser's Grove area. Oh, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful yeah. home. Mm -hmm. uh, they were a really young couple when they got this home. Uh, they got it for really cheap. Mm -hmm. It was a, 
a family of history that were the only people that lived in this home. And then I guess it was in the late 70s, they had sold it to another family, um, but the family swore it was haunted. And when, but when they first bought it, they got it fairly cheap. And then by the time this young couple bought the house, there was three stories in this house and the whole main level, everything going upstairs was boarded up. Oh. So they were like, That's weird. oh yeah. And they had soaked tons of money into this house and only on the main level. So anyways, this couple got it for really, really cheap. And uh, they started working on this house and they had two children at the time. And uh, they were a young couple. They were starting to make very good with another business. And um, anyways, at the time, she had a dog, a border collie, and uh, the dog would kind of get spooked in one area of the house. So what happened was uh, she had asked us if we would come to see her house, and because uh, they had built onto this mansion, and she had said that the dog goes crazy at the new addition of the basement. So we're like, oh sure, you know, like it's got lots of history. Well, we'd always gone into the homes and we would record. But when we went into this home, it was like middle of the day, probably the most beautiful home I've ever seen. And my friend and I both said, we'll go outside <laughs> and we will discuss like what, what we wanted to with this house because there was just this feeling in this house. <laughs> So we did a walk through the house and uh, before we started to interview her and uh, there were three stories and um, in an area that went to the other part of this mansion there was an area probably as big as from here to that wall and in it was just a couch and a really nice fireplace and a bridge that went off to their master bedroom and down below was a games room like it was just beautiful. But as we got in this area, it was the area that bothered us probably the most. And when we got to where this staircase went, you could see where their dog had worn holes in the floor from running around. So we went outside with this woman and it was like overlooking the Red River. So there were no neighbors close by. And we started to record and uh, as we were talking to her, she was telling us about how when she was a child, she had night terrors. And then when they went to build onto this home, her night terrors started again. And at the same time, she was pregnant with his, her youngest child, who uh, was a great kid, but nobody would sleep over at her house <laughs> because yeah. there was like too much activity. So. We were in the backyard with her talking to her and she said what had happened is I found that when we talked to a lot of people about um, the shadow people, yeah. because what would happen is I can honestly say out of 90% of the people we talked to, they would always say I didn't see anything, I saw a shadow. And then we'd say, well, what was the shadow? Was it a girl or a boy? And they knew. And they would be able to tell you when you ask questions what they were dressed in, what era they were from. So I think often we see more than we're willing to say. Right. So I think sometimes shadow people are really spirits that we just can't imagine visually seeing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So right. anyway, she had had two shadow people in her home. And she said one was a small boy. After we asked her, she said, oh, I don't know. No, I said, and she said a boy, and it was probably from the 1890s, right. I think it was. Well, the more questions we asked, we realized that she was actually, the people that lived in this home were also very involved with Hamilton House, oh, the doctor yeah. from Hamilton House. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in this three-story home, in the top level where this bridge came, there was actually a seance room that had once been there, which they had sandblasted the walls, but you could still see the red in the bricks. And below it was a veranda, which when they went to do all their work, as we were talking, we found out that there had been, uh, when they went to dig the basement attached to the house, they found stuff. And I said, what kind of stuff? And he 
he said clothes and stuff. Oh, yeah. And I said clothes and what stuff, like bones? And she said yes. So it was small bones that they had found. They were a young couple and they didn't tell anyone because they knew that they would have to stop of building because it was a historical home. Right. So she had told us about different uh, things that had happened with like a man and a top hat, right, that had ended up in bed with them. And her husband totally did not agree with any of these things, but yet he had come into the home one time and went across the bridge to their bedroom and she was having what she thought were night terrors of this boy that was a demon in bedroom take over her husband and she was pushing this yeah, thing yeah. away and uh, the next morning when they were sitting at the table she said he said you're oh he said to their child their son and said like why were you in bed with us and she said no no i was just dreaming that some that he, there was this kid in bed and he said no i looked over and i seen the boy in bed with us mm -hmm. so when we were doing our little interview, and I had asked when she said there was stuff, I said, why didn't you stop? And they said, well, we didn't want to have to stop building and it being a historical site. Right. So anyways, we did our stuff and we went home and we were sitting in the kitchen and we we're listening to the tape, which has nothing else on it but them. And as we were listening, there were you could hear different sounds and we were in the, like right along the river, so there was no other people. And when I said uh, that you found like bones and stuff, and she said, well, yeah. And then I said, why didn't you stop? And you heard loud, why didn't you stop? And there were many voices after on that. So a friend of ours, my daughter's nodding her head because a friend of mine is got Juno Awards and he would work with sound and stuff. So he had taken, we, we stopped the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my friend's husband said, nope, you guys are messing with terrible things. <laughs> so we, he took this uh, tape back and he said, whenever I get a chance, I'm gonna, you know, try mm -hmm. to separate yeah, everything yeah, yeah. and see what we can find. Right. And uh, it was a Halloween night. We were having a Halloween party at our house and he called in tears, a grown man, and he's oh, a big guy. Geez. And he was like, oh my gosh, there are so many voices on this this tape and he put it all on a CD and then NBC at the time wanted to come into this house and investigate the house but the family of course couldn't allow it because they had illegally dug and found things and moved on so anyways that's my story wow. yeah it was and really you did not disappoint yeah so, thank you so much. Reach out to me. I'd like to talk to you now. Oh, sure. Yeah. So yeah. he's got a few stories. Yeah. My yeah. other sister there has a wicked story. If you can, stick around to after. I've got a couple things I want to Oh, about. sure. Thank you, Andrea. That was amazing. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Uh, one more. One more. Yes. We have Victoria. Victoria. Come on down. She's on the tour last week. She looks very fun. Oh, Saturday. She was Saturday. 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 There was a psychic fair. Psychic fair is what we call host. was the arranger of that. She does all the beautiful psychic fairs. Uh, I, sorry. Uh, no. There's uh, sticks, like mediums. Mediums. sticks, mediums, and mindfulness market. Yes. Yes. So, Victoria. Victoria. No, that was a lot of fun. It was good. Um, my story, I mean, I've told a little bit at the fair, but I'm going to tell a little bit of a longer version. It's not going to hit the podcast for a couple weeks, I think. Basically. Yeah, yeah, a few weeks. Um, okay, so it's quite a long time ago. I'm not going to give too many details about like where it was to just protect identities and stuff, but um, the year was 2007. I was 17, and I had a fun day with my girlfriends, and we had a sleepover. And there's not enough room for me on the bed, so I, lucky me, I get to sleep on the floor. And my friends pass out really quickly, and I guess I have a lot on my mind, and I really can't fall asleep super easily. Um, so let's say I'm on the ground here, and then the bed's here. And closing my eyes, trying to go to sleep, 
and I uh, felt a tapping on my shoulder. Felt tap, tap, tap. I was like, okay, that's weird. <laughs> like, uh, must be my friend. She must be seeing what I'm up to. Um, so I'm like, okay. Hey, hey, what's up? Just dead asleep. And I'm like, hey. And she's sleeping this way. She turns around. She's like, what do you want? I'm like, she's like, I'm sleeping. I'm like, oh shit. Okay. <laughs> um, it's not you. Oh, sorry. I forgot a little bit of the story. Um, there was a tap, tap, tap. I was like, oh shit. What is that? And I'm like going like this, and I'm like, okay, there's a hand around here, and then I reach back. Oh my god. It's a wall, and I felt a man's arm with hair on it. Oh. And I'm like, oh shit. And um, I'm like, I don't think she has any like fake body parts around. So I'm like, okay. And it felt like a man, I felt the hair. And then, yes, and I'm like, hey, hey, are you awake? And she's not awake, and then she turns around, she's like, what do you want? And I'm like, okay, first of all, you're facing this way. Second of all, you're asleep. Second, third of all, I touch her hand. I'm like, yeah, that's not the hand. That's not the hand. Okay, go back to bed, please. And I had the hardest time sleeping that night. I really could sleep. Yeah, it was hard. And up until that point, I grew up very religious. Um, my friends and who I knew had like weird experiences happen to them. Nothing had ever happened to me up until that point. So yeah, my heart just like actually keeps beating um, because it was that scary. It was the scariest thing that has ever happened to me. And I had a dream a couple years ago of the house. And I saw a man lying on top of the house. I was like, okay, he's in a suit. All right. This is a weird dream. He opens his eyes and they're pure white. And I'm like, shit, he's looking at me. So I think he's still there. And that's my story. That's <laughs> yeah. awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Have you had experiences since? I just wanted that open it up for her. Victoria, did that open up things for you? Like, have you had seen things since? Uh, not really. No? But That's like, creepy, though. I didn't come into, like, spirituality until, like, 2019. Okay. I got, like, Reiki certified. Oh, nice. So, like, on a different level spiritually than I was when I was 17. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, at that time, only watched scary movies. Nothing ever had happened to me before. So, right. yeah, that freaked me out. Well, thank you so much. Awesome. So now I know some people have left, but hopefully they wrote their phone numbers down. We're going to do a draw because we like giving things away. Shall we have James pick some tea sure. in there? We yeah. have a wonderful prize pack. We have a $50 uh, gift certificate from Carlos Cucina on Winnipeg Beach. We have Chelsea that's uh, given a gift card of how much? $5. We're in business. Oh, wow. good. that's good. That's good. We've got some shrag happening in there and also a little down drug, some gift certs as well. So. Yes. All right, so our winner tonight is Alicia C. Woo! Come on down. Well, come get our, our lovely gonna bring it to you. Our lovely Dan will bring it to you. Oh, oh happy birthday! Congratulations. Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you and Laura. So we want to thank everyone who had the guts to come up here on the stage with us and tell That's your right. story. Thank you so, thank much. You so, yeah, so much. much. We appreciate that. That way we don't have to talk so much either. Yeah. Not like you want to hear us talk. I mean, I, you know, anyway. But uh, again, thank you for coming out. Thank you to Chelsea for manning the table. And yes. if you want some candy, because what's Halloween without summer rain without candy? Um, if they, we still got some swag left onto the side there. Help yourselves to yeah. check it out. Definitely, if you have any houses that you want help with, definitely email the Winnipeg Paranormal Group. Yeah, Ashley and Kelly, and they'll decipher as best they can. Thank you. And uh, 
again, uh, Giving Up the Ghost podcast, uh, wherever podcasts are downloaded, that's us. We do our shtick. We talk about creepy, cool, scary stuff, everything and anything surrounding Winnipeg and Manitoba, primarily. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for that. And uh, 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 sorry, next month, we're going to do one more time here at Little Pound Jug, and we're going to have a special guest. Yes. Chris Rakowski is going to be coming out. I don't know. Does anybody know who Chris is? Awesome. So Chris is the ufologist for Canada. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So can you guess what our topic is going to be? <laughs> but he's more than just UFOs. Like yeah. he's, he's involved with their group. Like he used to go out on investigations with Yeah, Chris so so. uh, was one of the very first ghost hunters actually in Winnipeg in the 1970s. So. Yeah. And we've interviewed him too. Great guy. He's so full of information. I mean, he's all into the cryptids, not just UFOs. He really wants to know more about uh, Bigfoot. You can also get his books at Raven's End. Yeah. Raven's End. Books. Yeah, go on down. Yeah. Go see at Raven's End on Greenwich. Mm-hmm. And uh, she has a lot more than just UFO books. She has amazing books there, and she will help you out with whatever you want to find. So, highly recommend Raven's End books. And if you want to get a, a get a hold of Giving Up the Ghost podcast, we are at uh, Giving Up the Ghost podcast at gmail.com. And also, we met. Do you do you know your line? Cheryl's line. Remember to live every day like it is your last and never give up the ghost. Thank you. Good night, everybody.